peepers are loud, buddy. Hey, y'all. Uh, I guess this is part two of me telling y'all about these guys and, you know, a little bit about Highlands. Um, and please forgive me for sniffling the entire time. I've still got a head cold. Uh, no, it's not. It's not the other thing. It's just a, just a common head cold. You know, people are still getting sick. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see, we were talking about the horns last time. Uh, they are horns, they're not antlers. Uh, they don't get shed. Uh, both male and female highlands have horns, uh, and they grow for the life of the animal. Um, every now and then you'll see a highland that doesn't have horns uh, and usually it's because that animal has been dehorned uh, usually at an early age uh, but there's a small chance that it's also been bred with a naturally polled breed of cow uh, which essentially makes it not a highland <laughs> because highlands are a naturally horned breed. Um, the horns aren't solid like a lot of people think, uh, but they're not hollow either. Those horns are filled with tissue and blood. And, you know, the highland uses their horns for digging up under the snow to get to the stuff he wants to eat. Uh, knocking over trees, you know, pulling branches down, moving leaves, stuff like that. But one of the biggest benefits of those big horns is that the fact that they are full of blood. And in the summertime, that blood's coursing through those horns and they act like giant radiators and it helps keep the highland cool. Highland cattle are very adaptable animals. Uh, you know, they've got them from northern part of Canada down to southern Texas. Uh, you know, in the hotter, more humid climates, you know, you give them some shade, a little bit of water, you know, usually they adapt just fine. <laughs> 